Welcome back, Allen High School Pre-AP Chemistry students. I hope you are enjoying your latest flipped experience. In the last video, we were talking about determining the percent composition by mass of a substance. Now what we're going to do is take the fractional portion, just skip the times 100 part, and we're going to use that as a conversion factor. I want to show you how much that saves. Uh, but th I'll show you an alternative way to do it if you prefer that. This, this would be just fine, but I think you're more likely, if you do it this first long way, to get a little bit lost in the journey. But we can set up a dimensional analysis and go through the heart of chemistry. When in doubt, go to moles. I think it's a, a helpful way. So I have 49.4 grams of magnesium, which is two plus, fluorides minus one. So I have that much magnesium fluoride. So let's go through that heart of chemistry. I have one mole of magnesium fluoride, and if you don't label as you go, it's like driving down streets and trying to follow a GPS with no street names. You gotta be very careful with that. So that many grams of magnesium fluoride. Now, in doing that, I've canceled grams because they are opposite, or would be if I'd written my unit down. There we go, kiddos. All right, now, I need to go moles to moles. And this is like doing a mole within. Remember, we can do it as an atom within or a mole within. And I have one mole of magnesium. And you must show these steps explicitly, even if it's only a one to one mole ratio. As I go looking for ways to give you partial credit, if your answer is not correct, this would be a point of partial credit. So you want to show that explicitly. And now my moles cancel. And if we think of it, we have now gone through that heart of chemistry. And now I can go back to mass to moles. So mass to moles, you moles use molar mass. So I'd have 24.30 grams of magnesium and one mole of magnesium. And if you cranked out that algebra, you should get 19.3 grams of magnesium. Now, let me show you how we can use that percent. Oh, I don't even need that much space. We're going to use that percent composition as a mass to mass ratio and do this all in one step. I have my same starting point. I'm still dealing with magnesium fluoride, 49.4 grams. Now I'm going to go directly to grams of magnesium, eliminate my grams of magnesium fluoride, right? We want those to cancel. Well, remember since percent composition is intensive, we can assume one mole. And so I'm going to assume the molar mass of magnesium fluoride. I'm going to do this one explicitly, one times 24.3 plus, I'm gonna to have to do just a little shifting here, I didn't leave myself quite enough room, plus two times 19. That's simply the molar mass of our magnesium fluoride. Now, within that magnesium fluoride, I have one magnesium, and it's contributing 24.3 grams of magnesium to the magnesium fluoride. So this is the first part of my percent. If I just multiply this by 100, I would have the percent, but I don't want the percent. I'm using this as a conversion factor. These grams cancel. I'm left with grams of magnesium, and lo and behold, I get the same 19.3 grams of magnesium. And I would be looking for that mole ratio. That number one would be worth a point because you're really showing the mole ratio there. Let me do a couple more, three more of these. So how many grams of oxygen are present? And I'm just going to do it the percent composition way in class, if you'd like me to work out the other way for you, I will. So I have 156.8 grams of calcium phosphate. And I want to know how many grams of oxygen I have. So I want to get rid of grams of calcium phosphate. And I want grams of oxygen. 
So I'm going to use my mass to mass ratio from my percent composition. So I have eight oxygens. They each contribute a mass of 16, right? Two times four is eight. And the total molar mass is 310.18 grams. I'm not going to spell it out in detail. You do know how to do a molar mass calculation. Um, I wanted to show you detail for one of them. Now, remember, if I multiplied this by 100, I would have the percent. But we're not asked for the percent. We're asked for the grams of oxygen. So I would get 64.71 grams of oxygen. I'm going to spell it out so it doesn't look like a zero there. All right, so now here's what's kind of cool about these. We can start getting into types of problems that are really industrially important. Uh, in this one, we're looking at grams of pure iron. Now, an ore is a mixture, a homogeneous mixture typically, of minerals. Um, amongst other things. And so we've got an ore and buried deep inside, supposedly this ore, is some iron to nitrate. So we want to know how much iron would we be able to get out of our ore. So we can sell the iron and maybe use it for making steel or whatever we use iron for um, in industry. All right, so I have 50 grams of the ore. Now, this ore is only 32% iron nitrate. So first I have to get to my iron to nitrate. So third, one way of doing this, there's a couple of ways, but there's 32 grams of iron to nitrate, whoops, and O3, <clears throat> for every 100 grams of my ore. Now, this isn't using that mass to mass ratio yet. This is simply calculating a percent, right? I would have been fine if you would have just said 50, many of you do percents intuitively, but you still have to show me your work. 50 times 0.32 gives me my percentage of the ore. As long as you show that work, I'm okay. I'm showing it all via dimensional analysis. Now, I want to get to the iron within there. Unfortunately, I picked yet another example where it's one-to-one, -one, but we had the oxygen before, so. All right, so I have one iron. It contributes a mass of 55.85 grams, and the whole molar mass of the ore of iron nitrate, I don't have, I have it written out in detail here, so I'm gonna give it to you. I have one iron, I have two nitrogens, you can just calculate the molar mass here. You don't have to put all this detail in the denominator. You could have done that separately. And there are problems where we give you molar masses. So, All right, and so this is the iron. This is my iron to nitrate. So I did a mass to mass within. And this has, you know, at least the way this is formulated, it gives you an inkling of industrial applications. And if we cranked out this algebra properly, which I assume you will correct me if we didn't, I get 5.00 grams. I really should have two zeros there, 5.00 grams. Because I've got, oh no, I'm gonna show you why we had two sig figs here. Let's take a look. I have three sig figs here, I have two sig figs there. We always go with the smallest when it's multiplication. So I would call that five grams. All right, now yet another cool application of this is just like any conversion factor, I can invert that conversion factor at my convenience to move in the direction that I wanna move in. So what if somehow we've done a test, we've reacted something with um, something that will react with our potassium all right, I'm trying to think offhand what reacts with potassium because honestly, not a whole lot that reacts with potassium metal. But let's say we have found something to react with our potassium metal and we know how much potassium we have. We have 35.0 grams of potassium in our sample and we knew that from some sort of an analysis, maybe some sort of a, um, atomic flame analysis or something. 
And I want to know um, how much potassium carbonate must have been present in the solution to begin with. All right. So this time we're starting with the within and we're going to go to the mass of the whole. So we start with our given 35.0 grams of potassium. Now this time I want to get rid of my grams of potassium and I want to go to my grams of potassium carbonate. Now this is the inverse of the fraction from my percent composition. So I've just flip-flopped this. Um, again, a conversion factor can be flip-flopped at our convenience. So I have two potassiums. They each contribute a mass of 39.1 grams. And my molar mass of potassium carbonate is 138.21 grams. So grams of potassium cancel. I have grams of potassium carbonate and we're doing 61.9 grams. Final answer. You don't even need to phone a friend. All right, there we go. Now, that's the end of this segment of our unit. We have a start of empirical formulas. We have a little bit of an inquiry for you that we'll do in class, and you will then have videos on doing empirical formulas, molecular formulas, and hydrate formulas. So until then, this is signing off.